I live here on Zambia's Lua Plains, a remarkable place, a remote and unspoiled African wilderness. It is a dramatic landscape where heavy rains transform the golden grasslands into a floodplain. This is the source of the mighty Zambezi. Each year it bursts its banks and the land becomes a lake. Survival here depends on an ability to adapt to extremes. And life in Lua is always a challenge, for some more than others. My story is true. I have survived more than the storms and the floods. I am the last lion of Lua. I have lived here all my life. Those that share my home call me Lady Lua. I am alone now, but I once belonged to the mighty Lua pride. We were strong and successful and had hunted these plains for many years. I am the last survivor. Why will become clear, but first I will show you how we live our lives in Lua. On these plains, the hunted and the hunter face enormous challenges. I have had to adapt more than most. Each year, the landscape changes. As the rains arrive, the grazing herds begin to leave. I watch these storms transform the golden grasslands into a lake. For the predators that stay behind, there's less to eat. You could say I'm fortunate. I have only one mouth to feed. It is not so easy for the hyena. They live in large clans and are always ravenous. They are my great rivals, and we fight constant battles over food and territory. Nothing stands between a pack of hyena and food. They never stop trying to scavenge and steal where they can. They make life very tough for a lone lion. The hyenas may dominate the Lua now, but it was not always like this. In the old days when we lions were together and strong, things were different. We always had plenty of food, and there were enough of us to keep the hyenas away from our precious kill. We ate well and never went hungry but we only ever took what we needed. I see that the humans who live here do the same. Like us, they adapt and make a home of the savanna and the lake. The Lawsy people have lived here as long as we have. For many years, they were the only people I ever saw. They leave us alone because they don't see us as a threat. The Lua is remote and isolated, not many people come here from outside. Each year we are overrun by huge herds. In the dry season we are spread far and wide across the plains as the wildebeest arrive to graze on the rich grassland. Their arrival is eagerly anticipated. Hungry predators hunt out the weak and the young. When they arrive, the herds are full of pregnant cows that have come to the lure to give birth. At the edge of the plain is King's Pool. This place is the only home I have ever known. Set among the trees, it was safe 
and provided the pride with welcome shade. But today the trees of King's Pool will help me to hide and keep watch over the vast plain. Unlike most lions, I'm a good climber. From here I can view the whole of the lure, and up here I feel secure. I can also see the first storms approaching. They bring the heavy rains that will so dramatically transform my home in the months ahead. This is a time when the peace and the quiet of the plain is suddenly broken. As the downpour begins, the parched ground absorbs every drop. The relentless rain gradually begins to fill the pans. While my enemies go to ground, the wildebeest can only huddle together and wait the storm out. The storms in Lyra are always violent and unsettling for us. But to me they are even more frightening, because they bring back bad memories from the past. you'll see that King's Pool has not always been such a safe place. Once the first rains pass, the plains appear even more vivid, and the wildebeest herds are more vigorous. I spend most of my time watching the grazing herds from the safety of King's Pool. When I need to, I hunt. But for a loner like me, hunting takes a lot of valuable energy. Without the teamwork of a pride to back me up, I have to be careful when I try for a kill. Most of the time, I have to watch the wildebeest gorging on the lush grassland while I sit here getting hungrier. Being alone has taught me how to be patient. This is not the right time. But I know that is all about to change. The plain will soon provide for me, as soon as the wildebeest females start giving birth. This strategy is no secret. We predators all know how to take advantage of the weak. Just as it brings new life to the herds, the leo also brings great danger. These marauding packs of hyenas are their greatest threat and mine. They outnumber me, and soon the pungent scent of the breeding herd attracts them like flies to a corpse. The mood becomes uneasy, as vulnerable mothers-to-be must try to get their calves out of their bellies as fast as possible. But no longer hidden in the middle of a herd, they are suddenly exposed and the loping hyenas are clearly anticipating a mighty feast. I watch one car struggle even more than usual. Her calf is taking its time, and she's drawing unwelcome attention. Every minute of this exhausting labor makes her more vulnerable. Then, just in time, the baby calf emerges and the mother is free. 
Now it is the tiny calf that is at risk. Like typical hyenas, they are distracted by the promise of an even easier kill. Another cow, weak from giving birth. She has no chance of escape. Her struggle gives the calf crucial time to get on its feet. And time for the herd to help get the little female walking. Every second the hyenas are distracted helps the little calf's chances of survival. For the clan, the cow is a bigger feast and easier to share out. Meanwhile, the calf seems to be gaining in strength, despite the difficulty she had coming into the world. The others encourage her to walk, knowing she must soon keep up with the herd. But as she gains in strength, I see that her mother has been weakened by the drawn-out bell. My hunger grows more intense as I watch the clan finish off their feast. Until the last morsels start a squabble and a challenge that must be dealt with firmly. Those lower down the ranks are pushed away. While the all-powerful female of the clan and her closest relatives will continue to feed. The rest will have to wait for the next opportunity in the hope of being satisfied. I can only watch as the hyena go on the prowl yet again. There are plenty more calves that could be separated from their mothers. So it is crucial for the young wildebeest to learn quickly how to run fast. One day they will be able to outrun the hyenas, but while they are this small and unsteady, they are easy prey. I watch the hyenas skulk amongst the herd looking for another victim, and I see the skies begin to fill with the first of the scavengers. With no chance of a kill today, it is time for me to return to an old meal. I too have learned how to scavenge. It is crucial for my survival. I feed over and over from the same carcass. In between the vultures get to eat their fill. But though I scavenge, I always prefer to dine alone. Even though they have torn at the flesh, there is more than enough meat left for later. I know they'll be back. All I can really do is show them I have first pick at a kill. Of course, being a lion, I did not always scavenge. We were a family of great hunters, Back in the days of the Lure Pride, I was the only female cub born in my litter that year. My older cousins were my teachers. I learnt as we played together. These games we all enjoyed built my strength and taught me how to stalk and catch prey. The Pride always felt like it was in safe hands. My father was our leader. He was a magnificent and distinctive black-maned lion. There were no other rivals here to challenge him, so from the moment he set foot in Lua, he made it his own. We stood out and we became well known because we were the only lions that lived here. and we may be the last. Back then, my family had nothing to worry about. Our territory was secure, and the lure provided everything we needed. 
In those days, I was never alone because the pride were always there. But since they've gone and I've been on my own, I've never seen another lion. Most of my life, I've had to learn how to survive alone. When I look at the others who share my home, watching how they spend their lives together, it reminds me of what I once had. The young wildebeest calves are always eager to feed on their mother's milk. This is also an important time for the new calves to bond with the rest of their herd. And a time for us predators to stay alert. But the young calf I saw struggling to be born is unable to suckle. Although her mother is weak and has no milk, the calf does not leave her side. Sensing this as another opportunity, the hyenas are already on the move. But hunger finally forces the calf to leave her sick mother. Without an adult to watch her, she strays from the safety of the herd and towards the hyena's den, where a young pup has been left alone. The wandering calf is soon spotted. The hyena pup calls out. Her mother is not far away, and I watch as the calf makes its first and perhaps last mistake. Without an adult to look after her, she's heading into terrible danger. Seeing his mother is close, the inquisitive pup is a little braver. Then just in time, a warning, and the calf realizes how far she strayed. Instinct takes her back to the safety of the herd. At this age, all youngsters are vulnerable. She'll need careful watching. <laughs> For now, the calf and pup eye each other from a distance. One day, they might meet again as predator and prey, roles they will grow into as they get older. The hyena guides her adventurous pup to the safety of the den. I watch the calf now back among the safety of her herd, and she's searching desperately for her mother, who's nowhere to be seen. As other calves stay close to their mothers, she's left alone. Even among so many, it seems you can still feel isolated and abandoned. With so many young calves around, the approaching hyena are even more predatory than before. Still calling, the calf seems desperate to find its mother as the herd starts to move on. As I shadow them, keeping my eye on things, 
I see that the calf's mother is finally losing her battle. She is stranded. As the herd watch helplessly, I see the hyena working out its best chance of another meal. The hyena moves in on the sick car. Still calling in vain, the calf must stay with the herd. This is the savage face of life in Lua. I wish it could be me taking advantage of this opportunity. But all I can do is watch from the sidelines as my arch enemy secure another valuable feast for themselves. While I am hungry for fresh meat, the hyena makes another kill and wins again. And I see the lure inherit another orphan. Like me, she loses her mother violently. With only one hyena doing all the work, the kill is not quick. The orphaned calf has learned a hard lesson in life. But she can fight the survival odds too. She can still try to find her place among the herd. While the other carps latch onto their mothers and feed hungrily, not being able to suckle just means she must learn to graze earlier than most. Even without her mother, she still has the herd to protect her. But for me it was different. I only had my pride, and when they had gone, there were no others. I look at this young calf, and I see similarities in my own life. Without a family, my future was also uncertain. Surviving here alone was always going to be a huge challenge. The greatest threat I face is from the hyenas. These powerful residents of the plains are my rivals for food and my enemies for territory for as long as I have lived in Lua. They challenge me time and time again. Hyenas always see your vulnerable side and know just how to take advantage of it. So I must put on a show of strength to reinforce my power and superiority over them. A routine I must constantly carry out is to stake my claim on this land strengthening my fading scent boundaries and confronting the hyenas who come to challenge me. Sometimes I can keep them happy with the scraps I leave after feeding. Unlike me, they'll even steal the bones of the carcass to crush and eat. It's a clever distraction I have learned to use. When there's food on offer, they forget about fighting me for this land. It's a battle of wills we play out time after time, saving our energy to hunt and watching each other for the slightest sign of weakness. If I had my pride with me, the hyena would never dare come this close. I'd never have to fight these battles alone. But for now at least, a lion still rules the lure.
as long as I can keep the dreaded hyena at bay. Scavenging is such a change from the life I once led, as one of the great lure pride. Before my family were taken, food was never a problem. My mother hunted and she always made sure of a kill. She brought the carcass back for the whole pride to feed from. My father would always be the first to eat. Only after he had finished feeding, we'd hear our mother calling out to us. That was our cue to join the feast. Our mother brought us what was left. Our father would stay and watch over us as we took our place at the carcass. He wanted to see us develop our taste for fresh meat. These family feasts always left us full. They also helped us to bond as a pack. Feeding together as a pride helped us to know our place and position in the ranks. It is what makes a lion pride one of the strongest families there is and helped to make us great hunters. One day I thought I would join my mother as she went hunting. But I never did. I don't get much fresh meat now, but there's still enough to scavenge and keep me well fed. Looking at the young orphaned calf, I think things will be different for her. Wildebeest have the advantage of strength in numbers. She will grow up as one among many thousands. If she lives that long, it looks like she's about to learn another difficult lesson. She's become separated from the herd again. The hyenas are never far from these breeding herds. There are just too many good opportunities. So the wildebeest must be constantly on the lookout. I watch the hyena provoke the herd. They move as one, packed as close together as possible. Then the hyenas start to circle the grazing herd. I know the way they work. I've been forced to watch them year after year. The orphaned calf is suddenly confused and the hyena makes its move. Suddenly, zebra and wildebeest both make a dash for safety. And the calf's instincts kick in as it follows them. But in all the panic, she has joined the zebra herd by mistake. The stampede is sudden and confusing. <laughs> then the calf gets another break. The two herds have bolted in the same direction. She's soon safely back with her own kind and something else has distracted the hyena. Yet again, they have been drawn by the lure of an easier opportunity. One of the zebra is injured and has fallen behind. If there's one thing any predator knows can lead to a meal, it's a straggler. The zebra is not getting away. So there's no need to hurry. But zebras are big, and the hyena calls for help. Their hunting cry makes the rest of the herd uneasy. Even the little calf seems to sense that the hyenas are back on the attack. They begin to work as a team 
maneuvering their victim away from the safety of its herd. The hyenas take their time, careful not to risk being injured. The zebra may be lame, but it is still able to put up a fight. This doesn't stop them. It is a prime opportunity no hyena would give up. But this is the lure, and the zebra's fate is far from sealed. The lame zebra is not as alone as it appears, and the other zebras have seen the danger it's in. If the injured one can't get back to the herd, then the herd can always come to the rescue. The zebras have won the day. They have saved this one's life, for now at least. And I can enjoy the look of defeat on the hyena's face. For once I don't need to watch them enjoy another fresh kill with their faces bloodied and their bellies full. I'm not the only one celebrating. The calf is in high spirits too. Perhaps because she has also survived another dangerous encounter with the clan. I'm beginning to see she has every chance of being a survivor. Practicing the distinctive sprints and leaps, it will help her to stay out of the hyena's reach. But she still has to settle into her life among the herd. Such massive numbers need good organization and strong leadership. I see how the biggest males of the herd keep order and how they work hard to stay at the top. Out in the plain, the adults fight their battles for power and the young ones mimic them. Games that will one day decide who will lead the herd. I have no one to play these games with anymore. It's just not the same on my own. Even the hyenas want to play, sometimes. Of course, their games often involve bits of prey. carried as some sort of post-hunt trophy. At least now they're not trying to steal from me or take my territory. The games they play are like those I learned as a cub, the youngest of the pride. When we had time together, we could indulge in innocent games. They helped us prepare for adult life on the lure, a life where the females would hunt for the whole family. We prepared for when we were grown and would hunt as a team. Our mother would keep an eye on us and just one look would keep us in line. As playful as it was, this time was crucial. 
We did not know it then, but the games we played as cubs were important for our growth, for strengthening our muscles and for honing our skills that we would need later on in life as adults. These games are also important because they helped us to develop individual bonds and alliances that are so important to the strength of the lion pride. As the only female cub, my place in the pride was crucial, not only for the cubs I would bear, but also to hunt. We were such a magnificent family. But I am the last one, and the lion bloodline of Lua will die with me. As the days pass, I see more storms approaching. It will bring heavier rains. The skies are heavy with dark clouds, and in the coming weeks, the plain will become a lake. The herds are grazing harder than ever. They must take what they can of the rich grass before it disappears under the water. Most of the calves are weaned now and feeding along with the rest of the herd. While the early rains are providing us all with plenty to drink, the real flood is about to hit. Then the only place left for the herds to graze will be the higher ground above the pans. But the herds must leave these small islands of grass before the water becomes too deep. The young calves become nervous. This is their first rainy season and they sense something is about to happen. A sense of unease sweeps through the entire herd as the skies darken even more. Even the hardy hyena are looking for cover. With the first drops of rain, the lure itself comes to life. The rains are such a powerful and unstoppable force that they will soon reshape our home. The flat plain holds onto the water and the land that has been grazed starts to slowly disappear. Over the coming days, I watch as the plain becomes a lake. We must change and adapt to the new landscape. It is not just the animals of the plain who can find a way to live here. For the lousy people who share this place with us, the flood is a special time. They have their own legend about it. It tells of the first great flood they call the Maya La Lungua, or the waters that swallowed everything. It is said the people were afraid to escape in their leaky dugout canoes. The first great canoe was built and loaded with seeds and animal dung. Where it landed, they scattered the seeds along with the dung, and it is said this is where all plants and animals come from. The waters that pour into the Lua bring so much nourishment to the land that the grasslands are among the richest of all. The biggest challenge to us predators who remain after the flood is how to stay well fed. The herds we depend on leave the plain for dry land. We predators must find other prey. 
often harder for us to hunt. And even those we usually chase can outrun us in the grip of the rising waters. Even the hyena have a tough season ahead, as their bulky, powerful bodies make them heavy and slow compared with the nimble lechwe gazelles. Back when the pride was here, we learned how to stalk our prey across the flooded plain. When we were old enough, we would follow our mother when she went hunting. Even though we cats instinctively shy away from water, we had developed the necessary skills that enabled us to navigate our way over the watery plain. These useful skills were passed on to each of us. We learned how the water made it harder to sneak up on prey and get close enough for a lion to strike. Those early years taught me everything I needed to know about living here. We learned how to get to higher ground where the flood could not reach and where we might find our prey. These days I can only keep control of a small territory to hunt in. I use the streams and rivers as borders. But I also see how the Lawsy people use them as highways through the Lua floodplain. The beginning of the Kamboka, meaning out of the water. It begins as the river starts to swell and cover the grassland. This is the way the people of the plain adapt to the floods. They build their boats and prepare for the water. Like us, their lives are shaped by the changing mood of the Zambezi River as it bursts its banks and floods the Lua. The Lawsy know that I live here alone, but they are no threat to me. All of us are left in peace by them. I see how they respect animals. The ceremony marks their move to higher ground at the start of the rainy season. The festival is led by a great barge, powered by a hundred paddlers, followed by a fleet of smaller boats. This is the barge that carries the king or the latunga. It is symbolized by a huge elephant. The Queen's barge follows, bearing a peacock. During the procession, they move to higher ground, away from the lower plain that is flooded. I know I will see them again after the waters disappear. The Great Flood has become a part of the way we live. It brings to the land a rich variety of colour and new life. And for all that abandon it in search of dry land, new animals arrive. Water attracts thousands of birds that come here to breed. On the banks of the lake, we see as they perform a ballet of colors, calls, and displays to attract mates. I look out over the huge, shallow lake that covers the savannah and see how the Lawsy people have learned how the lake provides, just as the grassland did. Even though the Lawsy villages are now abandoned, they will come alive again next year. Me 
Meanwhile, they still return to fish the lake. Ever since I was born, they have done this. We always knew why they came and felt sure that they were no threat to us. We lived in peace. I had never seen anyone else apart from the people of the plain until that terrible day. At almost two years of age, I began hunting. And being the only female in my litter, I found myself spending many hours away from King's Pool, practicing my stalking skills and learning how to hunt. I was out on the plains when I saw the strangers moving across the grassland. They were not like the Lawsy people. They were different. They were heading towards King's Pool, towards my pride. Loud noises frightened all the birds and the animals. Ever since that day, I have been alone. My family had been shot. None of them survived. You could say I was lucky not to have been killed, but part of me died that day. Afterwards, I grew up fast. At least I had been well taught how to survive here. And for all of us who hunt these plains, the lure still provides. It is peaceful again now. The lure is full of survivors, including the young calf. She has grown now and seems settled in the mighty herd. She's going with them as they leave once again. Most of the rich lure grass is now covered and the wildebeest use the last of the high ground to make their escape. But they will be back next year and my rivals, the hyena, will be waiting for them. And as the grassy plains change into a vast lake and then back again into a lush carpet of succulent greenery, I will witness the dramatic changes of the season. For I am the last lion of Lua, and it is my destiny to wait here until, as before, more lions journey to this place. and once again reclaim their rightful status as the Lua Pride. But until this happens, I am content to stand guard over my beloved plains.